Coming up on today's edition of the Bulls Report, we're going to be diving into the latest Bleacher Report trade idea as they had the Chicago Bulls trading for the 3 and D specialist from the Brooklyn Nets. Royce O'Neal will be looking at that trade package. And then the second half of today's video, we're going to be looking at what the Bulls' identity could be for this next season. You know, with the pickups up, pick of Javon Carter and Torrey Craig, I think the Bulls are going to be a little more locked in defensively than most fans think. So that's going to be on the second half of today's show. But before we get into the Bleacher Report part of uh, today's edition of the Bulls Report, shout out to Javon Freeman Liberty. He actually made second team for the summer league period in Vegas. So shout out to him. He absolutely hooped during that session, averaging over 21 a game on incredible efficiency. He shot 49% from deep. So I'm hoping Javon Freeman Liberty hopefully makes that uh, final Bulls roster here. Maybe he could be like the third string point guard for this team in the upcoming year because he deserved it. Chicago kid played at DePaul, was great at DePaul as well. Just wanted to give a shout out to him before we get going on today's show. But this was the Bleach Report trade idea that they suggested for the Chicago Bulls, and it's a trade with the Brooklyn Nets. And it would be the Bulls receiving Royce O'Neal, the 3 and D uh, power forward, small forward, from the Brooklyn Nets, and you would only need to give up two second round picks. And th during this trade, their kind of main argument for this was he would fit the disabled player exception for the Bulls. Obviously, if you are going to trade for a player and use the DPE, it has to be an expiring contract. And that's what Royce O'Neal is. So if the Bulls are looking for a way to possibly use the DPE, that could be it. It could be, you know, the Bulls uh, trading for a guy like Royce O'Neal and kind of fit into that 3 and D mold, which I think the Bulls, you know, could be still in the market for because obviously they ended up trading for Torrey Craig, still have Patrick Williams. But I think they could always use that extra shooting, especially at that 3 and 4 spot. But Royce O'Neal, from a productivity standpoint, he is one of the more underrated players in the league. And the thing that stands out to me the most on this uh, uh, graphic we have on screen right now for you guys is the three-point percentage. Like, the ability to shoot 38 plus percent in three straight seasons from deep, and you add that with his combination of size and his defensive versatility, I think it really makes him one of the better role players in the NBA. 38.9% from deep this past season, and then 38.9% in 2021 as well. He is the definition of a 3 and D guy in the uh, modern day NBA. And we noticed those types of players, they win. Like you look at what Michael Porter Jr. did. Obviously, you know, Royce O'Neal is not the caliber of player that MB MPJ is for the Denver Nuggets, but it's those 3 and D archetype. It's, it's those 3 and D, uh, you know, guys that are really those connector pieces on offense and that have that defensive versatility where they can switch legitimately one through four on the defensive end and if you would pair up Royce O'Neal with maybe a Caruso you know uh you know uh, Javon Carter and Io DeSumo if he comes back the Bulls could be absolutely fantastic and that's why I'm a big fan of uh you know Royce O'Neal and what he brings to the game of basketball you know just his overall you know versatility and his three-point shooting this is what Bleach Report their NBA staff they actually cooked up a trade idea for every single NBA team so it was their entire NBA staff that dropped this quote he said, uh, or their staff said, fans will clamor for another playmaker to glitz up what was a mediocre offense last season. The Bulls still can, or the Bulls can still get enough of that from the committee of Alex Caruso, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, and Kobe White. Adding a complimentary shooter who can guard three, sometimes four positions, is an equally big deal. For as much as O'Neal has regressed, from his Utah or from his Utah heyday, he continues to fill that role, and I'm a, I agree with uh, what they're saying over there at Bleach Report. I'm a big Royce O'Neal guy. I love what he brings to the game of basketball. Like you know, we talk about the modern day NBA. We know what types of players are so valuable, and that's why we've seen with like a team like the Boston Celtics, like them building around like the three and D. Obviously, they're superstars in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. But those are my guys. Those are my favorite types of archetypes of players in the league. Six, seven frames, six, eight, can get it done on, bo get it done on both sides of the floor. Royce O'Neal fits that bill to a T. But I'll ask you guys this question. Would you trade for Royce O'Neal? If it's those two second round picks, would you give them up? I'll make this the pin comment on today's video. Give me a T for trade or give me a P for pass down at today's pin comment. So what is the Bulls identity heading into this next season? You know, I feel like that's a, something that many teams, and no matter what sport it is, you've got to have an identity if you want to be successful. Like, obviously, we've seen the Nuggets this past year. They were an offensive juggernaut. Like, they had one of the most unstoppable plays in the NBA when it came to the Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic, Jokic pick and roll. But if we're looking at this Bulls roster as a whole, it's got to be defense. They have to get it done on the defensive side of the floor. They need to be one of the best defensive teams 
in the NBA this upcoming season if they want any chance to be successful. Because last season, they were good defensively. They were especially a great defensive, defensive team during the second half of the last season. Once they added a guy like Patrick Beverly, that point of attack defender, the Bulls defense really took that next step. I mean, they were top 10 in points per game and top 10 in field goal percentage allowed. I think also with the additions of Javon Carter and Court Torrey Craig, it's just going to take that to another level. Yes, we did lose Pat Bev to the Philadelphia 76ers, but adding Javon Carter as that point of attack defender, I think it's going to do wonders for this team. And I know the question is being, oh, well, we have Nikola Vucevic as our rim protector. Well, how do you combat a poor rim protector with strong point of attack defense and getting guards that can really get up after it and play that 94 feet? And this was uh, from NBA University on Twitter. They're a great Twitter file, uh, if you guys don't know. But they did... Um, just a deep dive into, you know, guard defenders in the NBA. And if you look at the top right of this graphic right now, you see that little bald guy with the headband. That's Alex Caruso, and he is one of the best defenders in the NBA. And I think he just kind of speaks more to the defensive prowess that the Bulls could have this upcoming season because you combine him with, you know, Javon Carter, and maybe if they do bring back Alex Caruso, the Bulls could have one of the best defensive backcourts in the league. And I fully do believe that. Like, yes, they may not have the overall size as, you know, Maybe like the Milwaukee Bucks guards have. Like, you know, with Drew Holiday having that true 6'4 frame. But, I mean, Alex Caruso, he's 6'5". He's got a super long ring span. He's got that extra chest to him. He's got that extra sense of physicality. Pair him, him up with Io DeSumo, another long, lanky guard who can get up to it and, you know, pick you up full court. And obviously, Javon Carter, you know, being from Chicago, went to West Virginia, played at that Press Virginia team with Bob Huggins, and just really picked up 94 feet. Wouldn't be shocked if the Bulls every single night during the regular season – we're picking up opponents' teams' guards right immediately when they inbound that basketball. But I think the Bulls, I think they're going to be a top 10 defense in the league again this year. But I ask you guys this question. The Bulls are a top blank defense in the NBA. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Curious to see what you guys have to say. Maybe they could be top five, but a lot of, a lot of things would have to go their way. Now, a lot of talk on uh, Bulls Twitter recently and just the streets of uh, the Bulls community has been talking about who's going to start at the point guard and who's going to start at the power forward. I think this is no doubt going to be the Bulls' starting lineup next season. I think people are suggesting uh, Kobe White be the starting point guard. I just don't really think his game fits next to Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. I think they need more of a defensive guard next to those two because obviously, you know, Levine and DeRozan, most of their focus is going to be on the offensive side of the floor. And then also Patrick Williams starting at the four. I really don't think the Bulls are going to just give it to Torrey Craig like some people are suggesting. I think maybe Torrey Craig will kind of motivate him a little bit and kind of you know, challenge him for that starting four spot. But I do fully expect it to be P-Dub at that starting four spot. But also, with speaking of Javon Carter starting at that starting point guard spot, the number one thing I love about this and just his overall game is that catch-and-shoot three-point percentage. He shot 43.9% from deep last season on catch-and-shoot opportunities. And I think that speaks volumes to, uh, you know, what the Bulls' offense could look like next season because you know a lot of the times it's going to be the first 15 seconds of that shot clock is going to be Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, and it will most likely come down to a guy like Carter, like a guy like Williams, having those catch-and-shoot opportunities at the end of the shot clock. So, yeah, Kobe White may be a better you know, player during the first 15 seconds of a shot clock in terms of creating his own shot, getting his own bucket. But, shit, during the last six seconds and during the last kind of you know, couple, you know, I guess, seconds of the shot clock, I think Javon Carter fits that bill a whole lot better. That's why I do think he should be the starting point guard for the Bulls. And this doesn't mean he should get more minutes than a guy like Kobe White. I just think starting the game, closing the game, give me Javon Carter over uh, Kobe White at that starting guard spot. But the Bulls shooting, I think this is another thing we need to address because I think this is a, I think they've done a great job, actually. These are a Bulls three-point shooting percentages from this last season from their role players. We obviously know DeMar, Levine, they're going to get majority of the shots. But the Bulls added shooting, especially in Javon Carter and Torrey Craig, both shooting nearly 48% from deep. And that's why the Bulls needed that shooting around Levine and DeRozan. They did that while also adding some dogs defensively. Obviously, the Bulls didn't make you know a blockbuster move this offseason where it was maybe trading Levine or getting Dame, Embiid, whatever it may be. They didn't make a big-time move like that. But they added players that will help them win on the margins. And those are guys like Carter. Those are guys like Torrey Craig. Guys I've been big fans of throughout their NBA careers. And they continue to impress me every single night they play. And the Bulls offensively, adding the three-point shooting is the biggest need for this team. Because the Bulls, listen, they shot a good percentage from the field last season. They were fourth in field goal percentage from the field. And you may be saying, 
Well, how does that make sense? They were fourth in field goal percentage. Why the hell were they 22nd in points per game? Because the Bulls were bottom five in three-point attempts per night uh, during the season last year. That's why we also seen Bulls Summer League. Obviously, those guys aren't going to be playing for the Bulls' active roster this season. But we've seen the Bulls coaching staff put a point of emphasis on putting threes up because this is not good. You can't be fourth in the league in field goal percentage, but be 22nd in points per game. I think with Carter, Craig, and the other shooters this team has on this roster, I think it's just going to be a whole lot better. I think the offense is going to put up a whole lot more points because you can't be 22nd again or else the Bulls are going to be missing the playoffs for a second, or for a, yeah, second straight year now. Uh, under uh, the Billy Donovan regime. But let me know, what is your confidence level in the Bulls making the playoffs? Scale it for me, 1 through 10. I, I would probably be sitting at a 9 for them to make the play-in. I think they're going to be a top 10 team in the East. Make the playoffs, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a solid 7. I'll give it a solid 7 in my confidence level. I think maybe they could squeak, it, squeak into that 6, 7, 8 seed spot. But guys, make sure you guys are subscribed. I want to be your one-stop shop for all Bulls, news, rumors, whatever it may be. We're going to be doing a deep dive into Alex Caruso tomorrow, so make sure you subscribe, stay in the loop, and we'll see you guys next time. As always, go Bulls.